welcome to the show. My name is Joy Harrington, and today we're going to talk about marketing language, aka how to get more sales because you are actually speaking your customer, your client's language, and therefore they want what you have. What separates people who are an awesome, massive brand with lots of sales coming to them organically is just because they're able to show up and talk in a language that their client understands. And this is something that's not usually taught to people when they join entrepreneurship. (laughs) Like, hey, how to start learning, how to show up online from a completely different perspective and a completely different language that's not yours is a learning curve. But I created some slides for you guys today. I'm gonna dive in and do my best to give you a little miniature lesson in this that I think is going to help you begin to start speaking more of your client's language so that you can attract more sales. So if you're watching on YouTube, you've got some nice slides. If you want to go back later and check it out on YouTube, you're totally welcome to because um, sometimes visuals can be really helpful. So marketing language, let's dive right in and let's start by defining what is marketing language. So what I mean by that is just anywhere where you are showing up and speaking to a potential client, any kind of Instagram post or stories, emails, texts, landing pages, a website, any kind of social media platform. This can be TikTok, um, Twitter, I don't know, wherever you are showing up and there are words or stories or pictures or anything that a potential client could come across and say, hey, look at this. This is a brand that has something that I might want you are using a language, right? The words that you're using, the perspective that you're taking, how you're showing up, what you're talking about specifically is all forming a language and it's either yours or it's theirs. So language is just the words, the perspective, the point you're driving home, the topic of discussion, the way you talk about the problem, product or service, et cetera, the story you tell, You need to remember that most of this is coming from your perspective, your interpretation, because you're the creator. And so you have a completely different perspective than someone who's never created this product before, right? This product, this service, whatever it is. Now, also keep in mind, there's totally layers to this, and we're not going to go this deep today. This could be a whole other topic, but you also want to take into account your target group, as in your ideal client right now. When you're building a business, when you start, you're going to have a specific type of ideal client. As you continue to grow, as you continue to evolve, that ideal client is also going to continue to grow and evolve. And so typically, The ideal client that you are pursuing today is not the same as the ideal client you were pursuing one year ago or even six months ago or maybe even two months ago, right? They're a different person. And I was just talking about this with Peter the other day in his business. Um, He does payment processing for businesses. And when he first got started 14 years ago, his ideal client was hairstylists and taxi drivers. And he was helping them take payments from their clients. Well, today, his ideal client are CEOs of companies that are generating 2 and $3 million a month in sales. Now, a CEO of a company that's generating 2 or $3 million a month in sales is going to have a completely different problem when it comes to payment processing than a taxi driver or a hairstylist, right? So you also can't continue to show up and talk to the taxi driver or the hairstylist if you actually want the CEO of the two or three million a month business. Does that make sense? And this is true of every single person's business. You're going to have different ideal clients at different points in time, and you can still attract all of them, but depending on the language that you're using the most will determine who you are attracting the most. Okay. So think about who is your ideal client right now, because each of them are going to have a different perspective of the problem. The first question I want you to ask yourself is, am I speaking to the right one? as in the one I want right now. And here's a great way to know, who are you attracting? 
who is the one that's filling out your application to work with you? Or who's the one that's inquiring about your product? Or who's the one actually buying your product? Or who's the one joining your team when it comes to your network marketing team, right? Are you speaking to the right one? You'll know by looking at the theme of who has been signing up with you. Depending on the perspective you're speaking determines the client that you draw in because they're going to have different perspectives. So this might help you if you are looking at the slides, this can be helpful. But again, this is a not multidimensional picture, obviously, because we're looking at a flat screen. But I want you to really picture this. You are on the left side of this screen looking towards the middle or you're on the left side of a room. That might help you too, looking towards the center. And your ideal client is on the right side looking back towards the middle. Your perspective from the left side of the room, looking towards the center at everything that's happening, everybody that's in the middle, what the conversation is, what's happening is going to be completely different than the person who's on the other side of the room looking in for a variety of reasons. Number one, just your geographical location, right? Where you're standing, what you are able to see from your geographical location. Number two, it's going to be different based on your own stories in your head, Right. We've talked about this when it comes to inner child healing and stories that we took on when we were kids about our own worth or worthiness, stories we've taken on about basic words or things that mean something to us. I always ask my clients, what are you making this mean? Because we make things mean something different than anyone else. Right. So that's why certain words can trigger you, but they don't trigger somebody else. So you're also going to have a completely different perspective just based on your lens. And I say that with air quotes, AKA all the different stories or trauma or things that you've been through that have shaped your perspective versus your ideal client. Your ideal client's going to have a completely different one based on their stories, their trauma, like everything that they've been through. So I want you to just grasp that and recognize that it is so easy to show up online and speak from your perspective, your traumas, your stories, your lens, and it can make sales really, really hard when you're not showing up from their perspective, when you don't know how to take your glasses off and put theirs on. Okay, next slide, their view, their problem. So... I just did a story while well, I did an IGTV on Instagram a couple weeks ago talking about sunscreen and estheticians. So I've seen a ton of estheticians showing up using reels to grow their Instagram, to grow their business. It's awesome. I love it. And there's a common theme. A lot of them show up being like, wear your sunscreen, wear your sunscreen, wear your sunscreen. My clients, when I try to tell them to wear their sunscreen. Now, I'm an ideal client for an esthetician. I take really good care of my skin. I get regular facials. I invest in the skincare, like all of the things. I have sunscreen. I have a couple of different kinds that I've bought from estheticians before. And I care about my skin. I care about it aging. I struggle with wearing sunscreen, not because I have a problem with wearing sunscreen. I want to take care of my skin. I don't want it to age. But my problem is when I put on my lotion, and then I put my sunscreen over my lotion and then I put my makeup on, my makeup starts to flake every single time and get ruined because it's like too much stuff, right? It's like too many layers. If I just do my lotion and do my makeup, it's totally fine. It's when I add that third layer of sunscreen that it messes with it. Like doesn't usually matter what kind I try. It always does this every single time. And I'm always annoyed so as their ideal client, they are speaking the wrong language because they're yelling at people to wear their sunscreen, yelling at people to wear their sunscreen. That's going to do nothing for me. I already know I should wear my sunscreen. I have no problem wearing it. I have a problem with how it affects my makeup and makeup application. And so the question they should be asking their ideal client is, why are you not wearing your sunscreen? Because if they knew why, they should be showing up on their reels and saying, Here's how to wear sunscreen in a way that will get your makeup to not flake. Or here's a sunscreen that won't make your makeup flake. Or better yet, here's a makeup that I invented that has sunscreen in it and you don't have to wear your sunscreen anymore. Hallelujah. I would be like the first person signing up. 
but they're not speaking my language because they haven't taken the time to dig deeper and figure out like, why am I not wearing my sunscreen? Not just you should be wearing your sunscreen. Their view of the problem is people's skin that I work on is damaged because of the sun. So the solution is sunscreen. Okay. That's their perspective of the problem. My perspective of the problem is yes, I want to protect my skin. And two, I want something that allows me to still wear makeup. Right. Um, there's another example here that I wrote down, which is people approaching me in the IG DMs for sales conversion. I've had people approach me that are like, we're high ticket closers. We can close more people, more, you know, high ticket sales for you. And I'm always like, you clearly don't know me or know my problem because my problem isn't closing high ticket sales because my ideal client doesn't want to be pursued. My ideal client doesn't want to be pressured. My ideal client knows who she is, knows what she wants. She's not afraid to invest in herself. She's confident. She's happy to pay for things that she wants to pay for. And if she feels like someone's pressuring her or pursuing her, that's going to repel her. She's not here to be chased. She is here to shop. She is here to pick luxury experiences and luxury things for herself, including coaches, right? Because she knows that she's worth it and she wants the best. But if someone's coming after her and be like, you need to buy, you need to buy, you need to buy. She's going to be like, oh yeah, get away from me. Right. So if they came to me with something different, maybe it was like, Hey, we can find you more people that are high ticket to be in your audience maybe that would be a different solution, right? Or we can somehow build out a freebie that high ticket people love, right? Like maybe that would be different, but instead they don't understand my perspective of the problem. They don't understand me and they don't understand what I'm doing. So lack of understanding your client's problems from their perspective will keep your approach repelling and not magnetic. A magnetic offer is one that understands the ideal client's problem and solves it, not the other way around. So a lot of people start their business and say, what's the problem that I want to solve? Instead of saying, what is this problem that I see other people having, that other people are telling me about, that other people are complaining about, that other people I see a need in the world, and I'm going to fill that instead of, let me just look for a problem that I perceive and solve it instead of what is the problem that other people perceive and I solve it. Those are two different things. Are you doing which one? Are you doing the first one, which is what is a problem that I perceive I'm going to solve? Or what is the problem that other people perceive they've told me about and I'm going to solve? So here's some great questions to ask, and I would interview your past clients or current ones as long as they are your ideal client, because this will help you get to know your client and their perspective of the problem. Be open and real to feedback. Remove yourself as much as you can from the business and listen with your heart, with your emotions, with empathy, with compassion, with caring. Be someone that's here to actually show up and help solve a problem instead of someone that's here to stroke your own ego with growing a business or you know, showing how awesome you are or what you can do or what you're capable of. Lean in to seeing it from their perspective, 100% and not yours. So you're really gonna have to make a conscious effort to take off those glasses, like I said, take off the business owner glasses, forget that it's your business, forget that it's what you wanna do, like don't let it be personal because it's not, right? And just lean in. Okay, question number one, what would they have said their biggest problem was when they found you at that time? probably their perspective has changed now. And so they're going to say they had a different perspective of the problem. So you really want them to remember back when they were looking for you, when they found you, when they found your solution, what would they have said from their perspective was their biggest problem? Because it's not probably the thing that you solved. It's probably something different. Two, what drove them to spend the money really? There was something deep down that drove them to spend this money. And it's not because you were so great or whatever. There was something that in their life that finally got them to draw that line in the sand, 
maybe it was a feeling, maybe it was an emotion, maybe it was something hard in their life, but what was it really? Number three, what was their overall experience of this problem and solving it with you? What would they change if they could? Number four, what made it a win for them? What was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this such a win. I'm a yes, a hundred percent, right? Five, what did it change in their daily life? I want them to think surface level, surface level problems, surface level things that they bump up against on a daily basis. What did it change in their daily life? And how did that problem surface in their daily life when they were looking for help? How did that problem surface in their daily life when they were looking for help? This is where we go to practical things. Instead of like the deep, deep things, we go to the practical surface level things that they can resonate with. Number six, what things did this eliminate for them? Either this experience of working with you or your product, whatever it was, what did this eliminate for them? Number seven, what did it add to their life, to their happiness, to their health? to their finances, to their marriage, right? Like, what did it add? Now you have a whole bunch of words and content ideas to show up and talk about. And you should be showing up and using this, what they just told you, as your motivation and inspiration for posts, as your motivation and inspiration for stories, anything that you're gonna show up with and talk to an ideal client, you want to be using these examples as like why they want the product, why they want the service, what this is going to do for them. Tell them about their problem. People love to learn about themselves. They always want to know when they're looking at your stuff, like what's in this for me, right? So this is where you're going to show up and talk from their perspective, their language, their perspective of the problem instead of yours, so you might think that you're showing up to sell soap and they're telling you that you're showing up to like sell something completely different. So to really take these words that they're telling you, like the problems that surface in their daily life when they were looking for help, that's the problem that you're now here to solve. That's what you're showing up and telling people that you solve or your product solves or whatever it is. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. I hope you love this episode. This is just a quick dive into marketing language and helping improve your sales. Again, if you didn't watch this on YouTube, you might want to head back over there. It's level up, babe, and check it out. It's called marketing language. So you can see the slides. It's got all the questions and everything on there. Take a screenshot, tag me on Instagram. I would love to hear what your big takeaway was and send this to a friend because there are a lot of people that don't understand marketing that are growing a business that have never been taught anything like this. And we want to be that person to our friends where we help all of us improve and get better together. All right. I hope you're having a beautiful day. I will see you back here next time.